Right, once again, ladies and gentlemen, moving on, we would like to invite Mr. Rizal Hassan, founder of Take Charge, to share his insights on navigating the changing learning environment. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Muhammad Rizal Hassan. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. Good afternoon. We're talking about change, right? So let's see you change. Move to another chair. As long as there's an empty chair in front of you, fill it up, including these chairs. And for those of you who sit in these chairs, you can get an extra reward. You have five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Come on. Three more VIP chairs here. Come on. There you go. One more. Seriously. Come on. One more. Ladies and gentlemen, we talk about change, yeah? This is the problem. Because some of you, when I say change, you change fast. Zoom. Fill it up. Some of you, when I say change, you, you know, you move. <laughs> some of you, when I say change, you say, you change first now. <laughs> if you don't change now, Bila lagi, because you might miss out on future opportunities. For example, these ladies and gentlemen in front of here, you're, in the, you're going to be rewarded. You're going to be rewarded. These are books from me. Please take one each. Yeah, sure. don't take any more, but just one each. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Now again. Some of you say, ah, if I knew there was a book this now, I would have moved faster. Ah. This is what we call excuses in our heads, right? And I'll tell you about these excuses later on. My name is Muhammad Rizal Hassan, and I'm going to talk about this. And I'm going to talk it from, from a totally different point of view, because we've been bothered, been bothered with, with a lot of data since this morning. I'm going to show you how to talk about this in a way that will share experiences among us. Because the experience that you have is that same data which you can use to navigate that big change that we are all facing right now. So let's clarify the topic first. Navigating the changing learning environment. Question, what changed actually? What actually changed? Anybody? Come on. Remember the reward that they, they just got? Come on. What changed actually? Mindset change. Cool. Now, every time when somebody says something, I'll give you a star. So when I say I give you one star, yeah, you, you put on that piece of paper, one X. One X equals one star. Who gets five stars today? We will call you Dato. Who gets 10 stars? We will call you Tan Sri. Who gets 15 stars? We will call you Tun. Usually, I do not go more than 50 stars because uh, after Tun, they mendiang, they pass away. <laughs> All right, one star for you. Cool. Mindset change. Maybe, but the thing is, the mindset before COVID and the mindset after COVID, the mindset way 30 years before, is that same mind. Probably. Now, for some, for some of us, we will say, what changed actually? Oh, now we have COVID. But if I'm sure most of you remember, once upon a time ago, we had economic downturns. So we've had challenges just as bad, actually, dulu. So has it really changed? No. Did it change suddenly? No. Tak juga. Yeah? You'd feel that COVID changed suddenly and we have to go online. But the thing is, online learning has been happening far longer, even before COVID. Yes or no? There you go. So... Did it change suddenly? No. So what happened? We were unaware of it. Or we couldn't care less about it. Then suddenly when it happened and it hit us in the face, then you decided, ah, I should have. Okay. So to navigate this, this colonial adanya change, ni, to use what? You use tools. Okay? So what tools can you use? Technology? face to face then we therefore what zoom can can we navigate using old school methods contohnya old school methods SWOT SWOT how many of you have used SWOT before put up your hands 
There you go. A tool which you can use to navigate that change, right? Maybe. I'm going to encourage you to use experience. And at this moment of time, the experience that you're going to use to help you navigate that change is whose experience? <laughs> My experience. I'm going to show you how I navigate that change ever since I started business. And may that experience that I share with you help you navigate the changes that are happening to you in your organizations. Who is me? Person who's done programs for 16 years. Works from home. Remember the three W's that we listened this morning? WWW? I also got WWW. Work with wife. <laughs> Conducts programs 24, 25 days in a month. Before COVID. <laughs> After COVID, not, not, not as a rancha as that. I, I, I work in nine countries. Uh, clients of mine are uh, like Coca-Cola, Nestle, Brock, you name it. Let me give you an additional point about me. I'm not registered with HRDF. HRDC. <laughs> in throughout my 16 years experience. And I still survive doing programs in nine countries. So this is the experience I'm going to share with you to help you navigate that thing, change, yeah? All right. So let's use tip number one. Stop bangawing. Remember the excuses that you had in your head for not moving to another chair? In my program, I, I don't call it excuses. I call it bangau. What's a bangau? This is a bangau. We Malaysians have a song called the bangau song. Do you remember the bangau song? I will tell you the bangau song in English. <laughs> bangau or bangau, why are you so thin? The bangau answers, I am so thin because the fish will not come up. Fish, why you not come up? Because the grass around the pond too tall. Grass, why you too tall? Because the buffalo did not eat me. Buffalo, why you not eat the grass? Because my stomach ache. Stomach, why you ate? Because I ate rice which was not cooked well. Makan nasi mentah. <laughs> rice, why you not cooked well? Because the firewood was wet. Firewood, why you wet? Because the rain came down. Rain, why you come down? Because the frog called me. Frog, why you, why you call the rain? Because the snake want to eat me. Snake, why you want to eat the frog? Because my food lah. <laughs> you see, how we tend to give excuses and blame, especially when you don't get what you want in life. So one of the first things that you're going to learn from me is stop bangawing. Yeah, dalam bahasa Melayu, usah. Membangau lagi. Because if you tend to bangau-bangau, things will happen to you. So turn to the person next to you, say in the face, stop bangawing. <laughs> stop giving excuses. As you navigate whatever changes that you're having in your lives, whatever obstacles that are in your way will be there. It may be an economic obstacle, it may be a personal obstacle, it may be health. Find a way. You want something? Go get it lah. No more bangawing. Clarify your intentions would be a second tip that I would share with you. Because, you see, many of us feel that we're in this life called the race. Yeah? And most of us tend to get our goals clear. But we all forget, in a race, you got two lines. One is the finishing line. Another one is the starting line. And I call the starting line intentions. Orang Melayu panggil niat. They get their goals clear. But they don't get their intentions clear. So when COVID comes along, economic problems come along, they get derailed. Because their intentions are not clear. So if your goals are, is to be rich, then you should be asking that big why. Why do I want to be rich? So when you get those intentions clear, as all these problems come your way, it will always anchor you back to your path. So as we go through all your challenges in life, clarify your intentions. What do you want actually? Yeah? Because that's going to help you get back on track. Number three. You know how some people say, do not lay your eggs in one place. So, go lay your eggs in multiple baskets lah. Now, what, what do I mean by this? Creating multiple streams of income. How many of you do uh, quality-related programs? Put up your hands. How many of you have attended project management programs or conduct project management programs? Okay. 
So let's say you are a person who does training on project management, and then suddenly COVID happens, and a lot of construction starts, and no more project management training happening. So how about coming out with project management for parents, for example? This is what I mean by creating that multiple streams of income. It's still within your field, but you see it from a different point of view. Because how many of you have had all those challenges managing family and work at home? Put out your hands. During COVID time. There you go, eh? So I know a lot of parents who wish they could learn project management in a very minute family kind of scenario. Tip number four, plug in your buckets. Yeah? You know, so most people feel that now's the time to make a lot of money. I suggest before you go on that mode, all those punctures, sell it, settle it first. Meaning if you have to get rid of that training room that you always had, and get rid of it, lah. Be professional, not emotional. Because for some people, especially for some trainers, yeah? When I talk to them about you have to get rid of that room, what would their, their normal response would be? Sayang lah. Kesian lah. But you see, when you want to manage a business, uh, you, you need to use the head because you have a family to feed. But when you run that business, you have to use that heart. So right now, you have to use that head. Plug in the holes first. Then find out ways to make money. Update and upgrade your repertoire. How many of you are NLP practitioners? Put up your hands. Very good. How many of you are hypnosis, hypnotherapy practitioners? Put up your hands. Very good. How many of you are body language practitioners? Put up your hands. Very good. Now, all those things which I've mentioned, some of us have learned it before. But the thing is, has that knowledge remained stagnant? Ever since you got your master practitioner, you never moved. So upgrade your repertoire. During COVID, I learned body language. I've learned body language to the extent of right now, it, it's already landed me to the knowledge of firasat. <laughs> yeah. Upgrade to the extent. Build your brand. Once upon a time ago, I was wearing that Kung Fu shirt. I had, once upon a time ago, 95 pairs. Different colors, different design. It, it was a brand for me. Yeah, apart from the Bangau. Um, but now, I don't wear Chinese anymore. I wear Japanese. Unique low. <laughs> now, for those of you, during these COVID times, as you want to manage to, you need to differentiate yourself from other people. So build your brand. For those of you who already have a brand, polish the brand. Because the brand before COVID... And the brand after COVID, as we move towards after COVID, needs to, needs to change. Kalau tak, you'll be seen as that person yang selama-lamanya lah dia kat situ. You need to move on. Build and polish your brand. Now, for those of you who don't understand what branding means, just understand this. It's about being consistent. Find something that you're constantly, consistently good and work on that. It's not about having that PhD. Tak. It's not about having a book. Tak. Right now, yeah, dulu, 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 when you have that PhD, when people say you have credibility. Dulu, dulu. But right now, because of this person who writes about food every day, consistently updates that blog every day, and, her, and his writing is so good that people all feel that this person has credibility. But when they call him, to present in front of people, we found out that he didn't even know how to cook. So credibility has changed, yeah? It's no more about you want to build yourself a brand, therefore you have to have that PhD. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Be good at something and be consistent on it all the time. Me, I'm consistent wearing that all the time. Walk the talk. <laughs> this is the curse of all knowledge providers. <laughs> We present in front of people, uh, either it may be your employees or when you go to companies and you talk about you know, how we must be better than yesterday. 
And when suddenly things like all this COVID happens to you, we tend to forget all those things we said once upon a time ago and not use it upon yourself. Yeah? So I always tell people that there is a, there is a special place in hell for people who do not walk the talk. Panas <laughs> kan? It is that bitter advice that you, we should all swallow. Now, bringing you from this point, how about that SWAT? Remember SWAT? How many of you know SWAT? Put out your hands. How many of you, during this COVID, either you are an employee with a company or you are a business owner, you SWAT to manage yourself right now? Put out your hands. One, two. Not as many as those people who learn SWAT is now. Now, let me share you a different tool because I find SWAT very negative. So I came up with something called SOIF. Strengths, opportunities, improvements, faith. So let's learn one tool right now, how to use SOIF to manage yourselves as you navigate through this challenging time. How many of you would like to learn that SOIF right now? Put your hands. All right. And the fastest way to learn is to experience it. Are you ready? Let's start. SOIF is a self-coaching technique which I use. In fact, I coach people using the technique of SOIF. Now, SOIF starts with an intention. Right now, as you are where, where you are, you may do it on your phones, you may do it on your iPads, or you may just write it out right now. What one thing that you want to see improve in your life or business life or family life, write it down now. You're going to experience life, right? But you need to have an intention. What one thing do you want to see improve in your life? It may be your business life, your family life, your work life. Find one thing and write it down now. Music ends, I'll move on to the next slide. Just to make sure, what you wrote is what you want, not what you don't want. So instead of saying, I don't want to be sick, you should be writing, I want to be healthy. Very good. Okay? My late mother, when she was young, she always told her friends, I do not want to marry a guy whose house is in the middle of the Sawah Padi. My dad, his house was in the middle of the Sawah Padi. <laughs> get what you don't want. <laughs> All right? So make sure whatever you just wrote just now is something that you want. First step, get your intentions clear. Here's the second step of SOIF. Strengths. What strengths do you have now to achieve the intention which you wrote? What strengths do you have now to achieve the intention which you wrote just now? I want you to list out as many as you can. Ready? Begin. Five, four, three, two, one. 
You have just listed out the strengths that you have now to be able to achieve the intention which you wrote. Yes or no? How many of you wrote more than... Who, how many of you wrote more than one? Put out your hands. There you go. Cool. Guess what? You do have the strengths to achieve what you want. You wrote it down. I didn't. Yeah. And from the many strengths that you wrote, check it out. Did you write God there? Sometimes we forget. <laughs> Sometimes we forget God is our number one strength, our number one reference of chat strength. So whatever you believe in, write it down. And make sure it's number one, not number five. Yeah? <laughs> All right. So you do have the strengths to be able to achieve the intention what you want. Usually people's mentality, they say it's difficult because they feel they don't have that strength. You do. You just write it down. All right. S. O. Opportunities. What opportunities can you see when you achieve the intention which you wrote? For example, watch me. For example, let's say there's a goal post in front of me. I'm about to kick the ball into the goal. What opportunities can I see when the ball gets into the goal? The ball is still at my leg. What opportunities can I see when the ball gets into the goal? Come on. Anybody who wants to answer, put out your hand. What opportunities can I see when the ball gets into the goal? The ball is still at my leg. Everybody give me a sorakan. Yes, I hurry you also. Come on. Thank you, thank you. Come on, give me one more. What opportunities can I see when the ball gets into the goal? Yes. Come again. Very good. Stop. Come here. I'm going to give you this. Now, if you list out all the opportunities for that just ball and goal, thank you very much, you will realize the opportunities outweigh the goal. It outweigh the ball at your feet. So shortly, I want you to write down, list down, what opportunities can you see when you achieve the intention which you wrote just now? List down as many as you can. Begin. Cameraman has a lot of work today with me. You know, he has to follow me. No. <laughs> List down as many opportunities as you can see when you achieve the intention which you wrote. Five, four, three, two, one. You have just listed out the opportunities that you can see when you achieve the intention which you wrote. How many of you wrote more than one? There you go. Okay. So the opportunities is far greater than the intention which you wrote because the intention which you wrote was just one. But the opportunities which you see because of that intention is far greater. So let that be the motivation for you to achieve what you want. Make sense? Very good. S O I improvements. You just now you wrote down your strengths, but you still haven't achieved what you want. Why? Because you need additional strengths. And those additional strengths come in terms of improvements. So answer the question. What improvements do you want to do to yourself to be able to achieve the intention which you wrote? What improvements do you want to do to yourself to be able to achieve the intention which you wrote? I want you to write down at least two. Ready? Begin.
5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You've just listed out the improvements that you want to do to yourself to be able to achieve the intention which you wrote. How many of you wrote more than two? Put that in. Very good. Now, from the many improvements, I want you to choose one that you want to do immediately. So, from the many improvements that you wrote just now, I want you to choose one that you want to do immediately and make it detailed. For example, if that one improvement is, I want to learn some more. Okay, learn what? When you want to learn? Learn with whom? When are you going to register? So, from the many improvements, choose one and make that one sentence as detailed as you can. Ready? Begin. Five, four, three, two, one. You have now written one if improvement. In fact, if I gave you some more time, I'm sure you go even more detail. But for now, it's sufficient. Okay. S O I F. What's the opposite of here? What's the opposite of here? Courage. I say the opposite of fear is faith. When you have faith, you have no fear. Yeah? Now, when I say faith, it's not just about faith in God, Sahaja. It's about having faith in yourself with the knowledge and skills that you have. It's about having faith with the people around you that they will all help you. It's about having faith in the economy that you will be better. Yeah? So when we talk about faith, it's a very big thing here. Now, to install that faith in you, remember that one improvement that you want to do? Say it to yourself. Then say it to the person next to you. In a way that you really want to do it. So that one improvement that you want to do this now, say it to yourself. Feel for it. And then turn to the person next to you and tell that person. And when you tell that person, tell that person excitedly. Yeah? Don't say, Ah, uh, saya ni nanti nak buat nanan letak kena. <laughs> Excitedly. No, scientists say emotion drives behavior. Yeah? Ready? Begin. Tell that person next to you. Uh, as you can notice, eh, there are some people having bangaus over their head. Eh, my luar nak cerita kat bangau. <laughs> Come on! Tell. You want something? Do it. Sure. Da? Okay. So. Three, two, one. Question. How do you feel? That's faith. Yeah? Faith is in the heart, it's not in the head. Head is belief. Yeah? And beliefs can change with knowledge. But when it reaches the heart, that drives you to get things done. And that feeling, even if it's a feeling of takut lah, but you still get it done, okay. As long as you have that feeling. Yeah? Ladies and gentlemen, you've just experienced soif. Yeah? You want to know more, you can talk to me later on about it. I'll show you how to do soif for your organizations. Question time. If you have a question to ask me, this will be a good time to ask the question. Malu nak tanya bangau. One of the challenges of digital learning environment is to keep the participants engaged. How can we tackle this issue? To me, things like you know, Slido, Zoom are all tools. If I may quote my this professor in USM, Professor Karim. He always reminds me and says, do not be the fool behind the tool. <laughs> <laughs> you 
It's how you use those tools to be engaging. So don't bang out the tool. Yeah? Don't bang out the environment. Find a way. Experiment. Use as many tools as possible. My more important thing that, I would, that crosses my head is whatever tool you use are all good. Is that, do you know why you're using that tool instead of the other one? For example, throughout my session, was there music? Yes? I chose each music. It was not just by hearsay, ah, put this music, sounds good. No, 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 no. There was a reason to it. Even the words in my presentation, I chose those words in a way, the tone of it, in a way I bring it down or high up. There are reasons to it. So whatever tools you use are all good tools. It is you who need to be more engaging in using those tools. My point of view. Don't bang out the tool. <laughs> Any other questions? Three, two, one. This is me. My name is Muhammad Riza Hassan. I am not a trainer. I am a professional learning facilitator. It's a, it's a thing which I have started 10 years ago. And in this world, we have about 2,300 professional learning facilitators who follow me in the way I present knowledge. So I don't call myself a trainer. Yeah? Thank you very much for the experience. Bila jumpa lagi, tegu-tegu. Yeah? Thank you for HRDC for inviting me. Assalamualaikum. Thank mm-hmm. you.